Now we'll create the VLANs for Router 3, IBGP underscore VLAN to connect to the IBGP neighbor, and R3 underscore VLAN underscore LB, the VLAN on the loopback interface we will use to simulate other networks behind this router. Assign the IP addresses to each VLAN as shown in the configuration diagram. Let's take a look at what we've created. You can see IBGP underscore VLAN and R3 underscore VLAN underscore LB with the correct IP addresses assigned. Now let's add ports to the VLANs we just created. Enable the ports in the loopback interface. Let's add the correct autonomous system number and the router ID number. Take a look at the BGP configuration. You can see the correct AS number and router ID number assigned for this switch. Now we'll create a BGP neighbor relationship with R1. Note that this neighbor must be on the same network, so you must use the switch interface for the neighbor rather than the router ID for this neighbor relationship. Let's see who are our neighbors. We now see router 1 R1 with its correct information as our neighbor. We see that it is currently identified as an internal neighbor and disabled as indicated with the I and the D at the beginning of the line. Now let's start the IP forwarding and BGP processes on this switch. Now we'll look at the existing routes on each switch. First on R1. On R1, we see that it shows its own routes. Let's look at the existing routes in the R3 routing table. On R3, we see that it also only has its own routes. These are indicated with the D for direct, as they are directly connected to the switch. Additional internal routes for IBGP are usually added to the routing table via an IGP process such as OSPF or RIP. For this basic IBGP example, we will add the extra routes statically. We'll add the extra routers loopback VLAN to each router's routing table instead of configuring OSPF here. Remember that you must do one or the other for IBGP to work as it is not an internal gateway protocol like OSPF. To update the routing table on R1, we'll add the additional routes that are currently in the routing table of R3. We do it statically as this is a basic configuration. However, this is most commonly done via an internal gateway protocol such as OSPF. We'll add the IP address of the loopback VLAN as well as its gateway. To update the routing table on R3, We'll statically add the direct routes that are currently in the routing table of R1. In this case, it is the loopback VLAN. We'll now configure the routers to receive routes from their BGP neighbors. First, we'll set R1 to receive routes from R3 by enabling R3's interface on the common network as a neighbor. Now you set R1 as the neighbor for R3. Remember, you must use the common interface.
Let's view the routing table on R1. On R1, we see that the static route of R3 has been added to its routing table. If we were running OSPF, this route would have been added, showing an O to indicate OSPF. Now look at the existing routes on R3. On R3, we see the new static route from R1, indicated with an S. On R1, let's export the additional route, the loopback VLAN, to BGP. Let's export the loopback VLAN on R3. This allows the route to be shared via BGP. Now we'll verify that the routes are communicated via IBGP. On R1, we'll first verify that one additional route is received from R3. We see that the additional route was received from R3. We see one route received from EBGP and now one route received from IBGP. Now we'll look at the specific routes received via BGP. We see the route to the two loopback VLANs on the other switches. It shows the peer or BGP neighbor and the number of hops or wait to get to that particular network. Let's verify the routes in R1's routing table. We can now see all routes in the routing table on R1. We see both the eBGP route and the IBGP routes. On R3, let's verify that one additional route was received via BGP. On R3, we see one route was received via IBGP. While still on R3, let's look at the specific routes received via BGP. We see the feasible IBGP route to 10.10.10.0 slash 24 on R1 and how to get to it. We also see the unfeasible route to 10.10.30.0, the loopback VLAN we created on R2 in AS200. This route goes through the peer 10.10.40.1 interface to the next hop interface 10.10.20.2 to get to the destination 10.10.30.0 in AS200. R1 needs to announce the next top interface to BGP to make this route feasible. Let's watch. On R1 we'll now export its other connected network to BGP. This is the network that connects R1 to R2. Let's look at the routes on R3 again. Now R3 has a route to all networks. Let's look again at the specific routes received via BGP on R3. Now we can see that the route to 10.10.30.0 slash 24 in AS200 has become feasible. The I indicates an IGP route. This route to 10.10.30.0 slash 24 goes through the peer 10.10.40.1 interface to the next top interface 10.10.20.2 to get to the destination 10.10.30.0 in AS200. The EBGP and IBGP configuration shown at the beginning of this exercise is now complete. This is the end of this training module. Visit the Extreme Networks website for information about our other exciting networking products. Extreme Networks. Tomorrow's network. Today.